Emmanuel, God with us. God drawing near to us. And last week we talked about how God drew near to us through Mary and her part in God coming near to us. Not an easy part. Not at all. This week, God with us. God drawing near to us through Joseph. I'd like to read to you this morning from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 10 through 16. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his place of rest will be glorious. In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the remnant that is left of his people from Assyria, from Lower Egypt, from Upper Egypt, from Cush, from Elam, from Babylonia, from Hama, and from the islands of the sea. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble, assemble the scattered people of Judah from the four quarters of the earth. Ephraim's jealousy will vanish, and Judah's enemies will be cut off. Ephraim will not be jealous of Judah, nor Judah hostile towards Ephraim. They will swoop down on the slopes of Philistia to the west together. They will plunder the people to the east. They will lay hands on Edom and Moab, and the Ammonites will be subject to them. The Lord will dry up the gulf of the Egyptian sea with a scorching wind. He will sweep his hand over the Euphrates River. He will break it up into seven streams so that men can cross over to its other side in sandals. There will be a highway for the remnant of his people that is left from Assyria as there was for Israel when they came up from Egypt. God drawing near to us using Joseph. Now, in God's economy, the calling of Mary to fulfill her part was expensive. It was costly. It, it was difficult. And God also called Joseph to be a part of this narrative. His part was no easier than Mary's. Consider, Mary had to make the announcement to Joseph, hey, I'm pregnant. And he had to somehow deal with that. He, he had to consider the reaction of his family and friends. He had to consider the shame that he would bear, not only keeping Mary, but even the shame he would bear in choosing to divorce her. Either way, it wasn't a good deal. He would incur, they would incur ridicule. When God draws near, when Emmanuel happens, we come to know things that we didn't know before. Mary and Joseph, they knew things. And though it wouldn't make sense to anyone around them, they knew things, and eventually it would make sense. To say that there was an immaculate conception, even a good Jew is going to look at you and think that you've lost your marbles. And then for Joseph, Joseph to say, I'm going to keep her, was scandalous. Because, according to Old Testament law, Mary should have been stoned. We come to know things. It said when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. Well, Mary and Joseph changed the way they looked at things. Now, in the opening scripture this morning, it talked about the root of Jesse. 
Well, Jesse, of course, was the father of <clears throat> King David. And the root would come from Jesse through David all the way to Jesus. The root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the nations. That's kind of weird language. When we think of a banner, we think of sometimes a signal. Um, if you've ever been on a trip and you've had a tour guide, sometimes the tour guide will hold up some kind of signal. It could be a fish on a stick. I mean, it, it, something so that everyone in the group can go, oh, over there. And they go right to where that banner is. Sometimes in an airport, you'll see a youth group and they'll all be wearing the same kind of t-shirt. You know, it's a really, really bright, obnoxious color. And everybody knows that's where we're supposed to be. And the root of Jesse will stand as a banner, as a signal, and people will go wherever the banner leads. Emmanuel, God with us, will lead them. He will lead them with a banner or a signal. Now, what might that signal look like? Well, whatever it looks like, it will call people. It, it will draw people to it. Now, we might not like where the banner is taking us. Mary and Joseph didn't necessarily like where the banner was taking them, where Emmanuel was leading them. He led Joseph to some, through some difficult times because, as I said, Mary was carrying a baby that wasn't his. Joseph knew the valley of the shadows probably better than most of us would ever experience those dark shadows. So they say, you know, unless you walk a mile in somebody's shoes, you have no idea what they experience, what their life is like. Well, let's, let's travel maybe half a mile in Joseph's sandals. Maybe because I'm male, I really relate to Joseph. It had to be just heartbreaking to try to figure this out, to try to maneuver these murky waters, navigate through all of that mess, and, and to just be open and honest to God and say, Father, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. Because this is kind of between you and Mary. And, and I am kind of spare baggage. Father, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. Well, Joseph's part in God's plan was this. Raise the banner. Joseph, raise the banner. Raise him as a good Jewish boy. You be his earthly father, and you raise this banner as a good Jewish boy. Raise him so that he might grow in wisdom with a good reputation with both God and man. Joseph, raise the banner so that everyone will see him. Lift him up. Yeah, I know he's not your flesh. I know he's not your bone. But he's been called to do something that will benefit everyone forever. Joseph, you want to know where you fit in this plan? Lift him up. Because this banner, 
this root of Jesse will lead like a signal. As a matter of fact, he himself will be the signal. It won't be it will be like a foghorn on the sea. People listen for the signal. Jesus' voice, his words, will be the signal. It's important because Jesus is not an icon. He's God made flesh, Emmanuel. So he's not just something to look at, He's something to listen to. And this banner, this signal, will gather people from all around the world. Let me read to you from Isaiah chapter 2. People from many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob's God. There he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the Lord's teaching will go out from Zion. His word will go out from Jerusalem. The Lord will mediate between nations and will settle international disputes. They will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will no longer fight against nation nor train for battle anymore. Come, let's go up to the mountain. He will teach us his ways, his signal will be a rally cry for people to come together. No boundaries, no borders, the kingdom of God, a place for all people of all nations the banner, would lead them. Jesus said, recorded in John 10, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep, and they know me, just as my Father knows me, and I know my Father. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. They follow me the banner from John 14 I tell you the truth anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater the sheep they do what the shepherd does they go where the shepherd goes they follow the banner The sheep resemble the shepherd. They do and say the same kind of things that the shepherd does. The people who follow Jesus, the banner, do and say the same kind of things that he does and he says. When the world looks out onto the people of God, there should be no denying who their shepherd is. There should be no question about which banner we are following. It would be obvious who the sheep are and who the shepherd is. From 1 John chapter 1, this is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So, We are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth, but we are living. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we all are walking in the light, that means we're walking in the light of the banner, and we all have fellowship with him and each other. So, maybe a 
question to kick around a little bit is, can people see the resemblance when they look at us? Can they, can they see Jesus in the way that we walk, in the way that we talk, the way that we serve, the way that we sacrifice? Do we look like a child is leading us? Do they feel Emmanuel when we are near? D do they feel something different? There's something different when, when they are here. There's some kind of calm, some kind of peace. There, there is some kind of order brought into chaos. Do people feel that? Do they sense that? Have we, have we really been about the business of producing others that look like us and we look like him? Are we willing to be led by Joseph and a baby boy, a banner, the Christ? There's a lot of writing in the last couple of years trying to clarify and trying to right some wrongs. And it's interesting because there are battles on both sides of the camp about what is biblical manhood and what is biblical womanhood. Define that. Unpack that. Because this world knows manhood as one thing and womanhood as another thing. And, you know, they write books about how one is from Venus and one is from Mars. And so what does it look like to have uh, an ethos, an ethic, a paradigm of Biblical manhood. Here it is. Joseph humbly submits himself to his wife's God-given calling, and he remains quiet. He supports her. He keeps her. He takes care of her. And the child, even though it's not his own, he raises as a banner for everyone to see. Now, we make fun of that sometimes and we say, well, what, what is your calling? And we might say, whatever she says. <laughs> whatever she says, that's my calling. That's not what's happening here. God is using Joseph in a very powerful way, and, and one of the things he does with Joseph is say, you're playing Second fiddle here, Joseph, okay? Because you can't have babies. <laughs> Mary can. And she's going to bring forth Emmanuel. She's going to bring forth the Messiah of the world. And your job is going to be to support her. Father, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. Here it is. And Joseph humbly submits In fact, Joseph becomes a banner for us as an example of what it looks like to truly be obedient. We, we don't hear much about Joseph. We don't hear much about Joseph. That doesn't mean it's because he was gone from the scene. That just means that he took his rightful position and supported Mary and raised the banner Jesus. So, you know, how are we doing with that obedience thing? How are we doing with being sensitive to God's call on us or our partner? Where is the banner leading us? 
what's our next step in the journey following the banner? Like Joseph, is it possibly a place that we might not want to go? And if you have questions about that, then you have to reach down deep into your faith and ask, is Jesus, is this banner enough? Is Emmanuel, is he enough? A king born to seemingly nobodies with a lot of baggage? A king born in the most humble circumstances? Scandalous. Scandalous. For Mary and Joseph, a stable with some straw and some rags for clothes, well, that was enough. That was enough. Is that scenario, the Messiah, the banner, being born that way through a Mary and a Joseph, is that enough? Can we accept Emmanuel just as it is? Are we content with that? Or do we really need to embellish Emmanuel? New players, new partners, new mysteries, more and different intrigue. Do we have to gather all of that stuff and put it either alongside of Emmanuel or even incorporate it with Emmanuel to make it palatable? Or is Emmanuel God with us through Mary, through Joseph? Is it enough? In Peter's second letter, he writes this, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. His divine power has given us everything we need. We don't need anything else. I sometimes call that the and then some. We don't need and then some. I don't believe we need and then some. I believe what we really need to do is embrace Emmanuel in the purest and simplest terms the way that God gave it to us. Through these divine powers, he has given us a very great and precious promise so that through that promise we might participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Is Emmanuel enough? Can we be content with Emmanuel? When we celebrate Emmanuel, what does that look like? The Lord, Emmanuel, the, the child, the banner. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, Joseph, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. You will prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. 
You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely, your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. I wonder how many times Joseph recited this when he was going through what he was going through. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need right here. He will comfort me. He will care for me. He will guide me. He might even spank me. But he's enough. Is he? Pray with me. God, it's not just for Joseph to raise the banner. You call us to lift him up, to raise the banner, to raise Jesus in a way that's undeniable, that God is with us, and that Jesus is calling people up to the mountain so that they will learn his ways and they will come away from that experience looking at things different, knowing things that they never knew before, changing their mind about war and violence, maybe changing the way that they see the relationship between your people where there is no longer Jew or Greek, male nor female, slave, master, but that in your son Jesus, we are one. Help us to work through these questions about are we really representing Jesus, are we really making a difference in people's lives? Father, we know things. Remind us through your Holy Spirit daily who we are, who we belong to, and help us to hold up the banner of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.